Hello, hello traders. Sana banani tumelangi absheni realocha. Um, 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 this is far as I can take it. First of all, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy, happy, happy new year. Hope everyone had a marvelous festive season. And yes, January is back to work. So for quite some time now, we've promised to give you something very special for the new year. And today is your lucky day. Um, as you can see, this is our philosophy lesson. So today we're giving something really, really special to our heart. We're giving you basically all our years of all our years of trial and error and try to sum it up in one thing. So basically we try to sum up all the important stuff and try to put in a 60 minutes video. Um, basically we wouldn't be able to take everything we know and put it on one so we try to take all the important elements and try and, and we try to make sure that we, we try to cover it for you so first thing as we go in on our presentation is that a quick introduction to us for quite some time now while well, you've been receiving market preparations from people but right? I'm pretty sure you've been wondering who is basically behind all this market preparation so today we've decided to come out of the closet so you know basically who are we and what do we stand for so first off as you can see the trading coaches so you have two trading coaches and first off it's me the serpent said duve as you can see this is just a picture of me um i was in the restaurant having lunch um yeah i don't really have many pictures so i felt like this is the quite the quest that they are uh, the quite um photogenic one i really have so yeah but basically this is Mr. Fenster Dewey. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me at Instagram. My personal handicap it's no Dewey. And yeah. Um. And next up we have my partner, personal partner. This is Mandam Siri. And yeah, you can find him on Facebook too as Mandam Siri. So basically, this is us. This is the people who who have been behind FX Link. This is the people who have been giving you all the help that you need. So about us first off we were self-taught for quite some time now i've heard people say that oh you can learn forex in your own um you need to pay for those expensive courses um you need to have a mentor you need to all this all this all this other stuff you hear about trading but one thing about us is that we were self-taught um we didn't come from a really bad environment of some stuff but um we didn't really have the money to pay for all the all those expensive courses so we had to learn through talent era. We had to teach ourselves from the very small fundamentals. Yeah, like being self-taught isn't isn't an impossible as everyone say, but you pass through a lot of trial and error that when you come to FX Link we, we try to avoid you going through all those unnecessary errors. But yeah, that's that's just what happens to us. Um we came from a background where all our, we, we couldn't find any close trader, we couldn't find a mentor. So we basically started on our own. We heard that there was something called Forex. We got fascinated. And from there we just started grinding on our own. Trying trying to learn it, going through trial and error as I said. And through God's grace we managed to get where we are today. So another thing, we've back tested over five years of data on multiple plays. What this basically means that is that basically a key thing to our success is back testing. Um, backtest is simply trading the past data as if it was current data. So what do you do is just you play back the data and we played slowly to the present date. So what what we usually do is that, for instance, we we'll take a pay, um, probably the euro pound, and as today's twenty eighteen, we we'll take data from back two thousand and thirteen, as that will be five years back, and from there we we'll backtest that data until now. So thinking about it would get five years of experience within a short period of time so we continue this habit on multiple pairs and yeah th that's basically how we learn how to trade by back testing all our strategies seeing the pros and strategies seeing the errors and that's basically the key thing to our success another thing we've studied several of books well not several we've studied many books as you can see one of the few that trade your way to financial freedom um if you went through trading for a living, uh, trading for a living, if you've been through the group, I'm pretty sure you've got it. And if you, and if ever you have read it, you see that this is a pretty good book for most beginners. As this book laid down all the fundamentals we needed to know about trading. So we really hope that 
for anyone who hasn't downloaded training for a little from the group. Um, just ask someone who send it to you and please go through this book. Another book we've read is coming to my trading room. So basically, trading for a living and coming to my trading room are from the same author, Dr. Alessandra Elder, market guru. He's been trading for years now, for decades now. Um, so yeah, he's pretty respected in the game. So going through his books, you really um shorten your learning curve. Another thing, um, we've done a few courses on the internet. Yeah, I know there are a lot of crappy um information on the internet. Um. I know there are a lot of people who are just trying to scam us to take money away from us, but if you really manage to dig deep on the internet, there are some really cool, valuable courses on people who really want to help us out here. People like FX Link, <laughs> who really just want to help people instead of just taking money away from us. So yeah, there's just a brief history about FX Link. So another thing, this is all the social handles you can find us. Let's talk about Facebook. Um, so. Whenever you get on our social medias, I will just open them so don't be surprised if you don't see a lot happening. Um, we're still working on it, we just started going this viral, so yeah. First is um, on Facebook, you can see it's fxlink.inc. Um, we just got on Instagram, it's fxlink.inc at Instagram. We also on Twitter, um, same thing, fxlinkinc. So on Twitter, there's no dot .inc, it's just fxlinkinc. And for WhatsApp, Telegram and YouTube, you will get the the link the oh you get the um what is it you get the links below oh pardon me for WhatsApp Telegram and YouTube um you get the links below on our video so make sure you click on our YouTube pages please please subscribe follow us on Facebook follow us on Instagram follow us on Twitter and yeah also on Instagram please show us love please show us support so once we've covered most of the introduction now let's get into the meat of things so i really hope you have a pen and paper close by because now we really about to get to what we're here for so this is our philosophy outline so first off as you can see we're gonna start by a system if you've been trading for quite some time or learning or reading about trading i'm sure you've come across the word trading system and i'm pretty sure you, you're asking yourself what is a trading system? So here's a quick note. Um, okay. A trading system is simply a group of specific rules or parameters that determine entry and exit points for a given equity. So the keyword in this case is specific rules. Basically, a system is a set of specific rules that you lay down for trading. Each and every trader has a specific rules that they trade by. Once you have the specific rules, this helps you eliminate emotions and this helps you eliminate uncertainty in the market. This basically gives you a guideline on how to approach the market each and every time you get it. Because one thing about the market is that you need to learn to put aside your emotions. And without a specific system, it's hard to put down your emotions because once you get in the chart, there's a lot of information that's coming through you. So... In order for you to be able to narrow it down to see exactly what you're looking for, you need to have a, a, a trading system. Basically, a trading system comes with a, something called a checklist. Um, this is something we'll go with through, through the second video. So, what we list. So, again, for those who didn't have a system yet, don't panic, don't worry yet. On the second part of this video, um, my partner Manta will be going through, with you through our system that we've dropped it down for you so for all those who who have a system um hopefully it's working never change your system or stick to one system as the cause for many traders fears that they switch from system to system so the plan isn't to hop from different system but to stick to one system plan your trade and trade your plan <coughs> so once you know what is the system so th these are just some of the things that we have in our system okay first thing is a top-down analysis so again if you have been if you have been with us on FX link for quite some time now you'd realize that every time we had a market preparation we would start our analysis on the higher time frame meaning if you'd notice we'd start by looking at the daily chart we jump down to the four hour and then we'd usually show you all our entry and exit on the hourly chart now 
this technique that we keep using is something called a top-down analysis. As you can see, as the uh, it's, we analyze the market using three types of time frames, where we start by looking at the higher time frame down to the lower time frame. So okay, so like I said, first off, we have the higher time frame. High time frame should be four to five times longer than the intermediate. So basically, what do we do on the higher time frame? Like, what is it exactly going to do? In our case, we usually our high time frame is usually on the daily time frame. So this is where you want to identify the overall direction of the market. So whenever you get to, whenever after choosing your higher time frame, there's no need to complicate and look for a lot of things. The only thing you want to see on the higher time frame, the only question you want to ask yourself is, what has the market done? Meaning, what direction is the market taking at this point? And after that, for instance, if the market is going up, after that you want to form a bias. After a bias is something, it's like a confirmation bias. After you see that the market is going up, you will take in a bias that you will look into buying. And if ever the market is going bearish, you will take in a bias that you want to be a seller. And this is very critical for, for you to have a bias on the higher term frame because it's easy once you go to the lower term frame. What usually happens is that once you go to the lower term frames, all the other terms start conflicting with the higher term frame. So if ever you never set a bias on the higher term, it's easy for you to switch perspectives. I'm pretty sure most of you has this thing where first thing you want to buy and then you look closely and you're like, oh no, it's a sell. Then you switch and you want to be a seller. And after you want to be a seller, you see something conflicting, you want to be a buyer. And this just this cycle continues and it just happens to set a lot of confusion. So this is what, this is what we want to eliminate on the higher term frame. So for instance, like as I said, after coming to the higher term frame, if you say that the market is going up, you take a pause that you want to buy. And after and while going down to the lower term frame, you don't switch your decision. You stick to the decision. All you're looking for in the lower term frame is your entry, your tick profits, or all, all those other stuff. But you stick to your decision of buying. So after seeing the direction of the market and after taking a bias on the higher term frame, the, the first the second thing to do is skip to the intermediate term frame. Now, the intermediate term frame is basically your trade your time frame of choice. For instance, if you prefer trading on the one hour, then the one hour will be your intermediate time frame. So in this case, the four hour will be your high time frame as it's four times bigger than the one hour. And then again, for your lower time frame, you take the 15 minutes. Again, if you prefer trading on the four hours, then the four hour will be your intermediate time frame. Hence, on the high time frame, you will pick the daily and on the lower time frame, you'll take the hourly hourly time frame. And as I mentioned, it's pretty important to go through it through first to start with the high time frame as I mentioned, go through the high time frame, form a bias, and then go to the intermediate time frame. Now what do we do on the intermediate time frame? After going above, for instance, we saw on the high time frame that the market was going up and we decided that we want to be biased. While coming to the intermediate, this is where we find key support this is where we find key supporting resistance and potential targets. So, hence I said, this is this is where you want to find your key supporting resistance. This one you see after, for instance, after on the on the higher term for so that the price section is going up and you will be looking to buy. So once you come to the intermediate time frame, this is where you will be looking for support level, you choose a support level, and you know that once market hits the support level, this way you want to go, this way you want to buy. And you will looking for your closest resistance area as this will be your tick profit. And as I mentioned, this is where you get your potential targets. The most important one is key. This is where you find the key supporting resistance. So after being on the, on the daily time frame, seeing the direction of our market, forming the bias down to the intermediate, where we saw our key supporting resistance, potential targets, the last thing to do will be to place the trade. And where do we place the trade on the lower time frame? Now, similar to the higher time, hence I mentioned the lower time frame should be four to five times shorter than the intermediate time frame. Hence I mentioned again, I know this is getting a little boring, but 
on the intermediate time frame if you choose the four hour then the lower time frame should be the hourly hence i mean it should be four to five times bigger lower than the intermediate so if the intermediate was four hour and the lower time frame is one now you can see that one hour goes four times into the four hours so now you get the drill so hence i mentioned on the high time frame you just saw your direction decided on buying went to the intermediate so your key support and resistance now we get to the lower time frame now this is where we just want to get um specific entry level so you want to get the precise place to enter without being seen the whole rig type of thing so once you've done all the three time frame after seeing the direction here in the pair after placing the entry now you're done with your analysis and basically this is how we analyze the market and this is basically how most professional traders do their market analysis so after doing your top down analysis which is your market analysis there are two things to do now when trading there are two types of techniques there's the counter trend and, the, and there's the trend continuation sorry there's the counter trend and the trend continuation so what is counter trending so let's let's skip to our drawing board over here okay so first off i'll try to explain what is a counter trend so let's say for instance okay we see this massive rally over here then price should stray down so, so what happens for me if it was looking at it as a sell so in this case price even starts building up slowly starts giving us a sequence of higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows so what is happening at this point well while we see a sequence of higher highs higher lows a sequence of higher highs higher lows gives us an indication the price action is in an uptrend and when people see a sequence of higher highs higher lows we will look into buy so as i mentioned price continues to go up but now because you're the clever type of trader you've been with fx link for long enough now you see that uh -uh, there's something about this level okay let me wrap this um price hasn't hasn't got this far yet okay ah, it's fine we'll just try the it looks better okay pardon that so why everybody has their eyes around this area well while you see a sequence of high highs high low this is you over here this is you the smart trader and just you this is the eyes this is the eyes this is the eyes this is the mouth this is this is the nose are you looking over here with a smile like uh-uh i'm smarter than that your eyes is on this area over here. you remember that right here this place this is where we had a significant s support area so while everybody is looking at this area as a sequence of high highs high lows and they were looking to buy you were looking for to sell over here now this is what's called counter trending you'll be selling against the prevailing uptrend meaning as soon as price section comes here has this area of of resistance you expect the price to fall down and this is where you, you will short here and simple again counter trending is trading against the current trend and some mention while everybody is looking at it as an uptrend you are counter trender you the small trader you trading against the uptrend expecting price to go shorter so i hope this is simple enough so let's try to explain um trend continuation so trend continuation isn't really that different from counter trending but okay it's quite different while on counter while on counter trending you're trading against the current trend on trend continuation you're trading with the current trend so for instance let's say price action was going down so what happens in this case again price action starts giving us a sequence of higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows now in that trend continuation the name is kind of self-explanatory we continue with the trend so in this case after seeing a sequence of higher highs higher lows normally how would we trade you would say okay we see the price section is going up so we're expecting past resistance level to become a, f a future support meaning past resistance has to become a future support 
and this is where we were looking for buying opportunity. So as soon as price action comes back in this area, this is where we were looking to buy, expecting price action to really back up. So this is trend continuation and the first thing new year was counter trending. Both of these techniques, if you understand them to the core and have practiced back tested them for quite some time now, both are really quite profitable. So it doesn't really matter what kind of trader what kind of a trader you are. There is no right or wrong type of technique. Both techniques are, are profitable as long as you know what you're doing and have back tested it for quite some time now. So yeah. The next thing for us are two types of approaches. Um some say these are two types of different traders, some say two types of approaches. It basically means the same thing. First off here we have aggressive approach. While my some might say you're an aggressive trader, um aggressive approach quite the same thing and we have the consecutive trader. So what do we mean by the aggressive type of trader? Okay, so let me just pull out the notes on them. The distinguishing feature of the aggressive trader is his willingness to buy stock in anticipation of a pattern development. Now, from this just from just this one sentence, um, we don't need to continue. I think this just gives us a sum of it all. The dis the distinguishing feature of the aggressive trader is his willingness to buy the stock in anticipation of a pattern development. Meaning, in this case, as a aggressive type of trader you don't wait for confirmations for you to trade you trade in in anticipation that a certain confirmation will occur for instance um for me uh, i've noticed many people trade stochastic and rsi and in, in an instance on rsi where we want to buy we were looking for an oversold so the more constructive type, type of trader will wait for the oversold for him to place the order so the more aggressive trader will buy expecting price action to be oversold he doesn't buy when the price is oversold he buys before price is oversold expecting price to be oversold so another example is right here as you can see we just drew our trend line over here now the more aggressive type of trader doesn't buy after the break of the trend line while everybody's selling in this case he's the one looking to buy he passed right here at the bottom expecting price action to break out so as you can see, um, an, an advantage of being an aggressive that um, this is a low risk high reward type of trade, meaning you catch you catch the move while it's just about to begin, so you manage to catch the whole move. So as soon as the move starts, you the people who are active taking advantage of the move and pretty sure be taking almost the whole pace as the move occurs. So this is a this is an aggressive trader. So secondly, we have the consecutive type of trader. So the, the, the consecutive trader was for confirmation that the pattern break or indicate the signal is correct. And some mention when you're consecutive, um, taking the example of a, of our other side, you first wait for price action to be oversold before you buy. Meaning you don't buy before it's over. So what you wait for it to go down. Giving the oversold signal, and this is where you will look into buy. So, another example similar to this is that remember on the aggressive trade, this way we had our entry. Now, when you consider it, you wait for the breaker to happen, and this is where you have to buy. This is just to show that when you consider it, although it's less risky, but you miss most of the trade, and this, this is where you will look into buy. Where when you're aggressive, you, you, you would have had your entry over here. So, consecutive trade it makes you miss most of the trade, and in my opinion, this is more risky because you trade once the pattern has already occurred and the price action. Once everybody sees an uptrend, price action now is most likely to reverse to turn. So, hence I mentioned there are the two approaches of trading, but similar to what I said on the two types of techniques, both of these approaches are profitable as long as you know what you're doing. There are traders who are aggressive and profitable, while there are other traders who will lose money while being aggressive. Conversely, there are traders who are profitable while being conservative, while there are traders who lose money while being conservative. This is just this just depends on your style of trading. The one thing 
um if you read a book called um the market wizard there's just a book of an author who interviewed um many many successful traders and the one thing he found was that most successful traders all of them have um different style of trading and this was this is their niche in trading everyone is different in their own way everyone trades in their own different type of style so if you're trying if so if someone you know is making money while being aggressive and you losing money but making money while being conservative you should stick to what you best on another key thing you should learn in trading is that you shouldn't focus too much on what what you're bad at um it'll take for you it'll take forever for you to fix what you're bad at the key is to know what you're good at and put more effort on what you're good at don't worry about what you're bad at it's going to take time for you to fix you probably might Waste your whole trading career trying to fix what you're bad at. So don't worry about that. The key is to find what you're good at and put all the effort on what you're good at. So that's just another thing that that will be your holy grail. So this was just an outline of our trading philosophy. Yes, I mentioned on the second part of this video, my partner will be breaking down a written down system that we've prepared for you. This was just um me trying to break down what is basically going to say on the on the second part of this just this is this is just to give you the theoretical part of it so once you've seen this video and once you understand it it'll be easy for you to follow up with them on the second part of this video so just a conclusion and the last thing we have for you is that we we want to start a new account so basically um we noticed that many people don't have enough money to start an account of $500 in one go. Basically, this is also how we started. We only showed you that it's possible to start an account for as little as $100 and still be able to grow it. So, I was supposed to show you this account, but because of um, the time constraint this book has put on us, once you start applying, it takes two, four to five days. Um, Basically, we don't have our account registered just as yet, but as soon as we have it kicking, we, we want to start an account for as little as $120. We want to show you the live account. We, we want to be tracking it down with you on a monthly period. And we'll be showing you how to grow a small account. So this is another thing to look for on this year on FX link. So we'd advise, so if you're also planning to open an account, this could be the best time. Um, put in your $100, tra trade, it, trade it with us, and we'll show you how to grow a small account. So yeah guys, hope you enjoyed this first part of this video, there's just the theory part of it. Um, hope you took some notes, take a break, refresh, and head down to the second part of this video. So welcome to the second part of this video. So as promised, we said I'm going to give you our actual trading system. So the key thing about a system is to approach it step by step. So the first thing you're going to do is that you're going to get to a high time frame. So the question you want to ask yourself when going to the high term is what has the market done? And to pick to break this question down further is that what you want to see is, hence I mentioned in the first part of this video, you want, to, you want to identify the market direction. After getting the direction, you want to form a trade bias or a decision on what you're going to do. Are you either buying, selling, or standing aside? And after taking a decision or taking a bias is that what well, next thing you want to do is identify all, all your significant levels on the daily chart so once you're done with the daily chart you want to move on to the intermediate time frame so the question you want to ask yourself on the intermediate is how will the market go there hence i mentioned on the intermediate this is where you want to identify all the potential targets so after seeing your potential target the market can either do things two things while approaching your target you could either shoot straight to your targets or the market could break out and form a one two three pattern so don't panic yet on what is a 1, 2, 3 pattern. Shortly, I'm about to pass the screen to Manda and he's going to show you the whole system on an actual live chart. Meaning he, he will break down this system on an actual chart for you to understand how, how do you apply it on an actual live chart. So after seeing how the market gets there, the last thing you want to do is where and where can I get involved. Hence I mentioned the last screen is, is where you want to place your orders. So... This is where you have your if then process. This is where you're going to have your actual checklist. This is where you have a checklist piece for you be before you know if ever you want to take this trade. So, another thing 
if the market is forming on an ABC pattern or a one two three pattern, as uh, simple, we treat it as if identified a, a downtrend, then previous support must become a future resistance. If identified an uptrend, previous resistance must become a future support. This is in case that we identify that price action will go to our target on the one two three pattern. If the market will shoot straight to our target, this is a you only want to counter trend. So if prices at a significant level, demand or supply, then look to enter with the treat bars. This is the treat bars that will form from the higher time frame. And then to break it down, you could either be aggressive or counter trending, or you could either be conservative. So I'm about to pass the screen to Manta. He's going to explain the whole system on an actual live chart. So um, let me give you a moment to try and write down this system for for yourselves. And then yeah, I'm about to pass the screen to Manda and we'll be getting the live chart. So yeah, hope ho hope you took the notes and dropped it down. So now I'm about to pass the screen to Manda. All right, um, hello traders. Uh, this is Manda here at FX Link. Uh, this this is the second part of the video uh, we have prepared for you. Um, this video we will be trying to reinforce the things you have learned from the first video, and we will be going in depth and making it practical for you guys so you can apply this on your homes um, alone too and i'm going to give you uh, a couple of pairs you might be looking at for the week ahead and uh, hopefully that the market will turn out uh, as we have thought okay now let's get to the charts and right here you, as you can see i'm analyzing the euro australian dollar pair on the daily time frame Usually, um, we use we use our top down analysis. We start from the daily time frame and we go to the lower time frames. Now, on the daily time frame, which is our higher time frame, mainly we look at what has the market done. We're trying to answer the question of what is the market doing, and in order for us to uh, answer that question, uh, we need to know market direction, uh, our structure, and we need to know what's going on on where the market is sitting at right now and trying to form a bias okay now in order for us to find uh, the first thing in the market which is market direction we have to know um, the Dow theory which is a series of higher highs higher lows or a series of lower lows and lower highs or we need to know whether the market is going sideways in this case, um, to identify uh, the market if it's going up or down or sideways, you need to know that if the market uh, simply, quite simply, if the market starts from the bottom left of your screen and is currently at the top right of your screen, the market is going up. And if the market starts from the top left of your screen and is currently at the bottom right of your screen, the market is going down. And if the market is ranging, between two price levels and hasn't broken out yet the market is going sideways in this case when we take a look on uh <clears throat> let me take my tool right here when we take a look uh at our lowest low right here you can see and when we take a uh, when we put a rectangle right there you can see that the market is going up we have our low right here and we have our peak and since the market is going up we have to identify a series of higher highs and higher lows 
and as the market started from this uh low let me let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see as the market started from uh, this low right here uh, let's trace it up the market made our first high from this low then we trace back to make a higher low market made a higher high made a higher low but okay then then the market shot straight up to this level now mainly the pattern we want to look at um in in an uptrend uh is support previous support must become future resistance excuse me guys let me correct myself previous resistance must become future support in an uptrend and in a downtrend previous support must become future resistance in order for us to sell to have a buying opportunity okay and in in a consolidating market we, we buy high and we sell low so we sell at the retest of those highs and we buy at the retest of those support levels in this case the market as it first made our resistance right here let me put a line we put a line uh, mainly i like to put a line when where the market has made a uh, resistance point so we can pinpoint where the is the is the market more than likely to reverse and if the market comes to that point um what are we looking to do okay in this case the market came back here and didn't come to our levels of previous resistance in this case it didn't become future support it made a higher high in this case okay now if uh the market has uh, did actually make um hypoth hypothetical speaking uh as you can see it didn't make that but if it uh let's say it did come to this level i could have bought and in hopes that the market could reverse and go higher okay now as I make, uh, as I draw my line on those, on that resistant level, okay, which is our new structure high right here, you could see the market made a retest at that level, then reversed off on this level, then another retest at this level, forming higher high, higher lows, then our first higher high became back at this level and as you know previous resistance should become future support in order for us to what to have a buying opportunity guys never forget that never forget that so the market came back and indeed reversed and our last peak is currently at this point okay now look at where the market is currently sitting at as i draw my line back here Okay, our previous resistance right here should become what? Future support. So this might be the right time to buy at this higher low. Okay, let me delete these. So, so I have my chart clean. Let's draw this out, this low out, which is our support that there and we have our resistance right here now since the market has um gone up and we have identified that uh, the trend which is an uptrend the next step is we want to form a bias and an uptrend what are we looking to do are we looking to buy or are we looking to sell that's right yes we are looking to buy in a downtrend, mainly when we are trend followers, we are looking to sell with the trend hope in hopes that the market would continue further downwards. In this case, we are looking to buy. And as I draw my trend line, my inner trend line and my outer trend line from this level to this one. Okay. And my inner trend line start from here to this point. Okay. As you can see, uh, the market has come to uh, our low extremes of an uptrend. Okay, and as it comes to that level, we identified what, what guys. Let me draw my rectangle from here to 
Okay, let me draw it from here to here. What is this zone, guys? Potential, our potential support zone, which is our previous resistance from here. Uh, let me draw it, okay? Which is our previous resistance from here. We had a retest at this level, another retest at this level. Right now, the market is testing these levels to see whether uh, these levels it has tested it once the first time the second time and it's currently at this level right now which is our third retest in this case to see whether the market um, would hold in this case okay in this level as we identify um structure since we have identified um trend and we want to buy forming a bias in order for us to make use of this confirmation bias this means we have to look all the other aspects that would confirm our theory to be th to be true and not necessarily um ignore all the other uh, aspects that disconfirm our beliefs but we want to weigh out whether our beliefs are right or wrong by looking at other disconfirming beliefs okay now as i take uh as i zoom in okay you would see as the market retraced back into this level first our first touch became what guys on our stochastics it became oversold at this point and when we get our old oversold levels what are we looking to do guys um, um what what type of information guys is our oscillator giving us a clue yes that the market might be ripe for us to buy okay now in this case do we have a breakout no the market hasn't yet made a lower low lower close in this case let me zoom in so you can see as you can see right now the market hasn't yet made a lower low lower close over this level so we haven't had our our breakout yet do we have a continuation to the downside uh, regarding this recent low swing no we don't have a continuation on the downside in order for us to have a continuation, we have to have a clear breakout in the market, okay? Now, last question. Is the market in a halt? Yes, the market is kind of in a halt. Why? The market retested these levels uh, for the second time now. Actually, for the third time, it made a retest made a lower low another retest then my the market made a high made a uh, didn't make a lower low and it's holding at that low meaning that the sellers are uh, the, the the sellers are losing steam in this case and it seems like the right time that the market wants to uh, reverse since the sellers are losing, are losing steam now since we know all this information this is uh this is the correct time to move down lower to the lower time frames and look for patterns let's go to the lower time frame now now on the lower time frame okay mainly what we look at for at the lower time frame is we're looking at patterns of our uh, patterns or signs you could call them whether the market is looking for a a continuation or whether the market is uh, kind of dying out since since we are focused at buying in this case we want to look at signs whether the market uh, is looking for a reversal or should we wait furthermore okay let me delete these so we can have a clear look on this one now taking a look from at this retracement from this high back to this uh, low right here 
you would see that the market has been going in a downtrend right so our first high was right here okay the market made a lower high right here we got our lower low at this point okay again and we got our lower low at this point okay and we got our lower high and this point and we got our lower high right here and we get our lower low at this point which is kind of which is where the market is retesting uh, right now okay now since we have been having a series of lower lows and lower highs and the market is moving in uh, patterns which is future past support must become future resistance uh, so that we identify a downtrend in the case in this case as I draw my lines uh, at our lower low you could see we have our first lower high right here we get our low our past support which is at this point must become our future what bam what do we get right here our resistance point right so our past low became our future resistance at this point we get our low right here and the, the market is kind of uh, in no man's land right now so since we are in a consolidation in this case and we form the bias on the higher time frame which is we look into buy right and on the um, on the lower time frame which is our intermediate time frame on the four hour time frame we identified a pattern of a slowdown in sellers momentum we haven't had yet our breakout right here so we have a losing of steam of sellers okay now we want to answer two questions actually one question what question again on the uh, on the lower time frame which is on our four hour time frame which is how will the market go there okay there are two things involved if the market um, it is in a stage of forming uh, a one two three pattern the market could either do this it could break out uh, come come in support at this level and continue back to retest this these levels or go back to those highs which were significant in the past okay the market is forming a one two three pattern in this case but as we are uh, uh, paying atten a, a closer attention in this case or uh, and on this chart actually excuse me guys you would see we have our first low right here and our second retest right here the last thing the market could do is this the market could shoot straight to our first targets right now okay now this is setting us up for another question which is where and when are we willing to buy since we want to buy and as we are in a consolidation let's go to the lower time frame um, to see where and where we are willing to buy as we are in a consolidation right now um, if you using if you are using a, an aggressive approach since there are two things involved in where and when the market uh, where and where when are you uh, you willing to buy and place your order now as you can see the market made a lower low right here but it's retesting these significant lows right now and as we identified a channel or a range where the market is kind of making repetitive retest uh, on both sides which is the highs and the lows this could be the place right now okay you could be looking for a buying opportunity let me let me change the color of this one let me draw it out again and change the color make it yellow I like gold <laughs> let's 
excuse me okay now since uh the market is at the point of uh, entry uh as you can see on our stochastics the market is overbought and we have what do you see guys what do you see yes of course on our, our stochastics we have potential bullish divergence until we have an uptick that's that could confirm our bullish divergence but now we have a bullish divergence why as you can identify uh whether when the market made this oversold state it was right here and the market is currently right here excuse me excuse me guys the market is currently right there connecting these lows from that low to this low logically in our stochastics it has to make a lower low as, as this uh, like this uh, so we cannot have a valid bullish bullish divergence but in this case the market is doing the complete complete opposite regarding price action the market made a lower low right here but now it is making a lower a higher low on this point which is this uh, low right here is higher than this is lower than this low right here okay and this low right here is higher than this low right here so this is completely contradictory um okay again as we see our bullish divergence check number one we are in the consolidation check number two we have massive bullish uh, massive um um we have massive major support on our daily time frame another check we have on our minus uh, our minor uh, our minor support level check now using an aggressive approach you might be looking for buying exactly on this point as soon as the market opens on monday you might be looking for a buying opportunity in hopes that the market could uh actually let me do this in hopes that the market could uh, give you a potential reward of 132 98 pips and having a risk of 30 25 to 30 pips worth of risk on this one okay or if you like me um you might be looking for a higher high higher close then a retest so you can uh, have a higher probability for your uh, your your trade to be um going in your direction okay that was an aggressive approach of actually executing whether my uh, when the market is currently at where the market is currently at when the market opens on monday you might be executing but if you want an uh, an uh, conservative approach you might be looking for something like this since the market has made a high right here okay we have our high which is right here okay let me zoom in we have our high which is the high that this current bullish uh, that, that this current bar has made and this is an exhaustion bar but on the downside okay if and i mean if the market does make a higher high and a higher close in this case you might be looking for an entry for a valid entry reason so you could buy in this case uh, either you could buy when the market does make it uh, as soon as the market makes a higher high higher close you buy exactly uh, targets exactly at these recent levels of structure uh, stops 10 pips below our lows right here as you can see it it, it increases uh, your 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 risk to reward but you might be adding a little twist on it you might say 
Now, if the market makes a higher high, higher close, that's a sign for me. That's a sign actually that the market wants to continue up. But in order for me to uh, actually decrease my reward, my, my risk and increase my reward, I would want a higher high, higher close to be formed and I would want the retracement back, a little bit of a retracement back to this level so I could buy exactly right at this level with targets at that same level with a 25 to 20 to 30 pips worth of risk on this one. Now this is our Euro Aussie pair. Uh, let's go to another pair and see what type of opportunity do we have and reinforce this um, this simple technique we are using and strategy that we are using on uh, on the on another pair. Okay, taking a look on New Zealand dollar against uh, US US dollar. Again, we go to the daily time frame. We want to identify the direction of the market. As we actually zoom out, what is the direction of the market in this case? That's right, the market is going sideways. Let's, um, let's take a look on our peaks and our lows. So we can make it, we can have a clear view of where the market could give us a potential reversal and where the market could give us a potential uh, resistance or support. In this case, our highs come over right here. Okay. And our lows are currently right here. Okay, let me make it like this. As you can see, the market has been going sideways. Sideways in the sideways movement, you want you want uh, you mainly want to position yourself uh, yourself up for um, counter trend opportunities or a continuation uh, opportunity uh, back to the the the. the recent high or low depending on whether the market is supported and whether the market is supported or resisted at uh, the bounce okay let me change the colors of these uh, i like my color to be gray to be grayish i like gray since we have a smooth sale of the buyers right here we mainly want to look at structure okay we we have uh, our first step out of the way which is what which is identify direction the market is consolidating okay since the buyers have been going up in a smooth sale and the buyers as we pay close attention from this resistant level right here, the market broke up, make it, made a support, made an, uh, another resistant level right here, broke up, didn't make a, a, a support, and is currently sitting where? Where is the market currently sitting at, guys? It's sitting at our retest of structure. In order for us to see if the, that retest is a major retest of structure, we have to see three, uh, four, uh, three to four touches so we can identify it as what? As a major, a major structure level right there, okay? Uh, as I drag this level across, let's identify if this level is major, guys, okay? First things first, where, where did the market test? Starting from here, uh, excluding from excluding going backwards, even if we have multiple retests at that level right there. Firstly, the market broke up, as you can see right now, supported first touch, another touch, 
a clear support in this case you have a touch again another retest at that level one two three four right the market broke through made a resistant level resistance actually it broke up made a resistance level right here and now the market is kind of at this place okay going to the uh now since the market has been making multiple retests in this level i will be looking for a counter trend opportunity which is a potential selling opportunity okay and the market is currently at this level what is the market doing as soon as the market came near to this level the market was overbought and now as the market came in we are tracing a bearish divergence in this case okay going to the four hour time frame okay uh, on the four hour time frame we mainly look for what patterns that's right guys how will the market go to our targets okay will the market uh, shoot straight uh down and go to our uh, levels of support or back to these levels okay or will the market kind of do something like this break below close below make a retest then shoot uh straight down to our levels of support okay now since we know how will the market go you want to know where and when will I enter and how will I enter okay now that as we go to the lower time frame that would give you a sign of where and when should you enter and how you should enter okay excuse me guys let me take these out uh, to make it more visible and more clear now since the market in this case is currently at our resistance levels you might have two approaches again a, a an aggressive approach which is exactly as soon as the market comes at this point you sell as soon as the market opens you sell with stops higher at this level and targets back at our structure level right here okay you might have a potential target uh, of 127 pips and a potential risk of 51 pips in this case okay or or you might be looking for a conservative approach to be having a conservative approach i normally look for what a lower low lower close then a retest back at the structure level now Okay, let me delete these and uh, rephrase it again. Um, redraw it actually again. The market has been making higher highs, higher lows. As soon as the market made a, cons a little consolidation level right here, but what did the market do? Broke out, made a higher high, made a higher low. So I will make, I will actually mainly be looking at this low right here okay as i will be uh, looking at this low right here drawing my trend line i'll be looking i'll be looking for a break of this trend line in this case a break of this trend line a break of this um low right here a little bit of a break which is a lower low lower close right here and after a break a retest of these levels of structure and what do you see guys on and okay on your stochastics what do you see you see a bearish divergence we have our high right here and our higher high right here but the market is failing to make a uh, higher high on this one making a lower high okay as soon as the market breaks this level i would potentially look for a retest at that level showing us showing us a sign of um 
um, a last push of bias which is waning in this case so I'll be hoping uh, to sell back at these structure levels after a retest with uh, the correct sign uh, with the correct uh, position which is right here exactly right there uh, 20, 30 to 40 pips worth of risk and a 135 pips worth of reward in this one I hope you have um, learned um, I hope you have learned uh, much of the basics on how to read the chart on this trading philosophy we tried it to we try to make it simple as possible so you guys um, can learn and actually understand uh, how this theory works and how this strategy works I hope you have liked it if you have liked it uh, comment share and like this video as we are going to post it on other platforms again so thank you guys for watching this uh, this is Manja and Offense. We will see you next week and keep you on the loop on this, on these trades. So, goodbye.